Metric tensor is a mathematical tool to calculate distances and angles in any crystal system. Calculation of distances and angles is very simple in a Cartesian coordinate system. We all know how to do that. So it's also very easy to do it for a cubic system because cubic system behaves just like a Cartesian system. But how do we do these calculations in a more complicated system? For example, a hexagonal system. So metric tensor is a tool which generalizes this problem for any crystal system. So let's do, let's see how do we do this. Let us begin with what we are familiar with and that is the Cartesian coordinate system. So we have three orthogonal axes x1, x2 and x3 and we have three basis vectors along these axes e1, e2 and e3 and let us select two vectors the vector r and the vector s and let us express these vectors in terms of their Cartesian components. So we have R is equal to R1 E1, R2 E2, R3 E3 and we have S as S1 E1, S2 E2 plus S3 E3. So R1, R2, R3 are components of R and S1, S2, S3 are components of S. So sometimes we write only the components R1, R2, R3 and S1, S2, S3 to represent these vectors. Now how do we find the dot product of these two vectors? So let us write the expression for the dot product. So we want to calculate the dot product of R and S. So we get, if we open the parentheses and expand this, we get the nine terms. So we have these nine terms, but if you note, because of the, because the E1, E2 and E3 are the Cartesian basis, they have very interesting and simple property about their dot product. And that is EI dot EJ is equal to delta IJ, where delta IJ is the chronicle delta, which simply means that this dot product will be zero if i is not equal to z. The two basis vectors are then orthogonal or is equal to one if i equal to j. So if we use this property then we get that six of these nine terms are simply zero e1 dot e2, e1 dot e3 become 0. Similarly, these terms become 0. Also, because of uh, the vectors are of unit length, the dot product of the vector with itself is 1. So e1 dot e1 these terms are all equal to 1. So this entire expression simplifies as we know, we are already familiar that the dot product can be written simply as R1S1 plus R2S2 plus R3S3. We can also write this if we so wish. 
product of the row vector and a column vector so if we multiply row by column we will get this product how do we generalize this into a more for a more general coordinate system so as you know in crystal coordinate system we have three basis vectors a b and c these vectors need not be equal and they need not be at 90 degree to each other so this is a more general crystal coordinate system so if we express the vector in these components then how do we find the dot product in terms of the components so let us take again let us say we take a vector u and a vector v and express these in terms of these basis vectors so we have u as u and a plus u2 b plus u3 c then we have v as v1 a v2 b plus v3 c how do we take the dot product of these two vectors now well the procedure is exactly the same so we get u dot v as so we again have these nine terms and now we don't have this beautiful property of the cartesian coordinate system so none of these terms are necessarily deep because the vectors are not orthogonal and none of these terms are also equal to one because the vectors are not unit vectors so actually we have to live with all these nine terms but we can do something better we can organize these nine terms now in a matrix form and if we want to do this you can see that we can write this as so you can see that we have written this dot product now as a product of three matrices a row vector representing the vector u a column vector representing the vector v and in between there is a matrix of dot products of the basis vectors this matrix is what we define as metric tensor and we give this a symbol g so we can write our dot product u dot v as the row vector u1 u2 u3 times the metric tensor g times the column vector v1 v2 v3 so this is where the metric tensor plays a role in calculating the dot product between two vectors you can see that the entire information of the basis vectors are inherent in this metric tensor g so let us see what will happen if we apply this to cartesian coordinates so let's check it for so since here for cartesian coordinates a is e1 b is e2 
and CD3. So we have the G. So the metric tensor is nothing but an identity matrix. So the dot product between two vectors using this general formula involving metric tensor becomes this where the metric tensor itself is an identity matrix since it's an identity matrix it disappears from the product and we simply have multiplication of a row vector and a column vector this gives us the familiar dot product in the Cartesian coordinate system. Let us look at some property, some interesting properties of the metric tensor. First note that the dot product is commutative. So you have A dot B is equal to B dot A a dot c is c dot a and b dot c is c dot b because of these equality the metric tensor g becomes a symmetric matrix another interesting property of metric tensor is determinant of the matrix tensor which is which can also be written with G with vertical bars. This is nothing but the square of the volume of the unit cell, where V is the. To prove this property, let us introduce. Let us introduce a Cartesian coordinate system. With our crystal coordinate system. It does not matter how this Cartesian coordinate system is oriented with respect to A, B, and C. It shares the same origin and we have introduced a Cartesian coordinate system. Then we can express the three basis vectors in terms of the Cartesian coordinate systems. So we have A1, E1, A2, E2, B3, B is equal to B1, B1, C3, E3. So the above relation can be written as a matrix relation like this. Let us label this matrix as an S matrix. And this matrix is nothing. It, it is having the components of vector A as its first column, the Cartesian components of vector B as its second column, and Cartesian components of vector C as its third column. So if we write the component, the Cartesian components of the vectors as column vectors, we get this S matrix. But now the vector algebra tells you an important property about this S matrix. The determinant of S, determinant of S is nothing but the triple product between vectors A, B and C. And this triple product is nothing but the volume of the parallelopiped defined by A, B and C. So it's the volume of the unit cell. So this S matrix determinant is the volume of the unit cell. But how is S matrix related to G? You can see that what will happen if I take, if I make a product of transpose of S with itself, S transpose S. 
So if we write this, let us calculate a specific term of this matrix. As an example, let us calculate the term 2, 3. This term can be found by multiplying the second row 2 with the third column 3. So we get B1 C1 plus B2 C2 plus B3 C3. But these are Cartesian components of B and C. So this is nothing but dot product of B and C. But look at our definition of the G matrix. Dot product of B and C is nothing but the 2, 3 term of the G tensor. So this is this is nothing but G 2, 3. Similarly you can show that all the term, any term ij term first transposes is the ij term of G. So, so G is nothing but S transpose S. Let us find the determinant of G. The determinant of G is determinant of S transpose S. But determinant of product of two matrix is product of individual determinant. And determinant of transpose of a matrix is just the determinant of the matrix. So we have the square of the determinant of S, but we have already shown that determinant of S is nothing but V. So we have proved the determinant of G, the metric tensor. So this gives you a way to calculate the volumes of any given unit cell. You just write the metric tensor. The determinant of the metric tensor is a square of the volume. How does one calculate the metric tensor? So it's not very difficult. If you know the lattice parameter in terms of lattice parameter A, B and C and the angles alpha, beta and gamma. These are the axial lengths. And these are the interaxial angles. In terms of this, it's very easy to calculate the terms of the metric tensor. So G11, G13, and G31. If you know the lattice parameter, it's very easy to calculate the metric tensor. And once you know the metric tensor, it's easy to calculate the distances and angles between any vectors in a crystal system. So let us look at an example. Let's take a simple example of hexagonal systems. In hexagonal system, we have A equal B, not equal C, alpha equal beta is equal to 90 degree, 
gamma is equal to 120 degree. So we get the metric tensor G11 equal to A square G22 B square which is also A square C square G12 and a square cos 120 degree which is minus half a square g13 and g31 a and c are at 90 degree which is 0 And G two three G three two are zero. So we have the metric tensor A square So let us use this metric tensor to find the dot product. of two vectors let us find, use this metric tensor to find the dot product two vectors mm. hexagonal system So these are the two vectors and we want to find the dot product so as we have seen we can write the dot product as this product and here we have so if you multiply the metric tensor with the column vector to the right we get and finally Multiplying these two vectors, we get so this is the dot product of two vectors in a hexagonal coordinate system. From this, it is very easy to calculate the length of a vector. So, if you want the length of the vector u. Sometimes instead of using C parameter, we want to use a C by A ratio. So if you want to write it in terms of a C by A ratio, you can take A square common from this. So we get A G2 square. comma square u3 square where comma is the c by a ratio once we know the length it's easy to find the length and the dot product of two vectors which we have so once we have the dot product And the length we can easily find the angle because we know the angle between two vectors will be simply the dot product of the two vectors divided by Length. So that gives the cosine of the angle between the vectors 
Ich muss den Nebel nicht sehen. Thank you.